feel in the face of all the problems in the world impotent, and why I somehow cannot transform mine. Now here we get to the real problem, because we're always telling each other that we should be different. Now I'm not going to tell you that tonight. Why not? Because I know you can't. Nor can I. That may sound depressing. But everybody, you see, who is at all sensitive and awake to their own problems and human problems is trying to change himself. We know we can't change the world unless we change ourselves. So when we are aware of the ego I, we are aware of this chronic tension inside ourselves. And that's not us. It's a futile tension. So when we get the illusion, the image of ourselves, married to a futile tension, you've got an illusion married to a futility. And then you wonder why I can't do anything. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's live stream. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a little bit late today. Got a little bit of a slow start. Got home a touch. Um, I'm going to say late again. I don't have any synonyms for that. I was late. Uh, I was mountain biking, trying to get out earlier every morning so I can actually do the stream on time, but I have made it up to you with a bow tie. So let's record this idea. Let's just get straight into it. Okay, goodness gracious, where do I even begin with this? Um, same place as I have begun the last five times I looked at this exact same chart? Sure. So, first and foremost, we have the 300 period as our longest overexpanded period, um, which translates more accurately on the one hour chart to uh, 1050. So we're actually gonna do our analysis down here. So 1050 is our mean reversion pivot. As long as we are above that pivot, we imply trend will be sustained. Okay, this is the most influential thing we can look at on this chart at this time, right? Where as I pretty much said it all there. If we're above this purple line, trend will be defined, and because of how rapid this previous move was defining trend is I drink all my water oh it's over here got too many cups uh, because trend here was so instantaneous that the compression of our shorter term distributions well rather did lead to the formation of a flag and an ascending triangle for a bit but Really, guys, don't trust breakout patterns, especially ascending tri triangles, especially on Bitcoin. Let's take a look at why. Mm -hmm. It's because your liquidity is abused. Okay. We had this bad boy right here, and it was the most obvious ascending triangle the world has ever seen. If you went ahead and checked on all of the 
major social media platforms, Twitter, 4chan, Reddit, what have you, uh, you were seeing this drawing right here, and as long as they looked at the chart from over here, holy, let's get that perfect at that location. Well, it's really easy to imply trend continuation, right? We have defined resistance, and then, oh, we broke up above resistance. This is an ascending triangle on a bullish trend, so we are going to continue our uptrend. Lo and behold, immediately after, we see significant red dump. Significant red dump. Beautiful. So, why not assume that should happen on a more macro perspective as well? Because the easiest way to make money for institutional investors is to make it look like one thing is going to happen and then simply have it do the other thing. Right? Abusing your liquidity. So... If we have, oh goodness, want to paint the ascending triangle again? I do. Maybe this time it's going to work. We have another ascending triangle. Goodness gracious. Uh, I would actually anticipate this to be of a more sub, um, substantial fake out because, well, it's a more substantial flag now. We've had a longer period of compression, so we can have a longer period of trend that results from the compression, right? So that's going to look like a significant sudden bump to the upside and then probably some dump directly following it, right? Music's too loud. Hold on. Meh. Ah, that is super laggy. Okay, let me reduce the bit rate. And for all you trading view folks, yeah, I might just not publish this, I don't even know. 800. Might be better. We'll see. Sorry about that. As long as you can understand me, we're good. Anyway, detour aside. Well, I really do believe we're going to get the fake out of trend continuation be rejected from the weekly 50 moving average and then see the mean aversion pivot cross to the downside. And if that mean aversion pivot is crossed to the downside, well, we might as well expect full retracement to the weekly 200 moving average. So if we want to get a better look at this with our weekly pivots, why not? Let's go take a look. Okay, and let's actually take a look at the BLX chart for the sake of sanity, okay? Brave New Coin Liquid Index for Bitcoin. If you ever want to look at the full history of Bitcoin, uh, you just got to type in that ticker. So, 50 and 200, right? Okay, if we take a look at our previous crash pattern, we see the following. Where we have the re-entry of the 200 band which trends down to the 200 moving average, a re-entry of the 50 bend, which leads to a trend to the 50 moving average, and then a rejection to the 200 moving average, and then when we break above the 50 moving average, that's when we see our bull run. So, where are we on Bitcoin? I'm glad you asked. We have re-entered the 200 bend. We trended down to exactly the 200 moving average, we re-entered the 50 band, we trend exactly up to the 50 moving average before trending back down to the 200 moving average, at which point Bitcoin does a little bit of sideways bottom action where things get really boring and volume gets really low. And then price breaks up above the 50 moving average, which results in our next bull run. Right. It is important to notice that when I say bull run, I don't mean a full on bull run, I just mean the start of an upward trend. Right. If you buy directly on the weekly 200 moving average or above the weekly 50 moving average, those are your two best bets for entering a leveraged long-term position in Bitcoin. 
Like, if you want to get a futures contract that just never expires, I wish that was true, uh, you could very reasonably enter on the 200 moving average or above the weekly 50. All right, those are your most probable and profitable pivots to enter a bull trend. Now, let's talk about risk to reward. We still have all this compression that needs to happen. We need the 50 band to compress around price. That's going to take a long time. Okay. Um, we can actually see that on the, say, daily chart by looking at the 250 band. Because the 250 band is actually the longest overexpanded period on the daily chart here. So we should be able to get some pretty relevant pivots. Currently set to 200. It went. What? 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 250. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So 250 is our longest overexpanded period here on the four-hour or here on the daily chart, right? So we will trade laterally as defined by this compressing band, like so. And if, I'm actually going to look up the higher resolution version of that because. Uh, 1730 on the four hour is a better representation of that band than 250 because the daily chart has a lower resolution. So down here on the four hour, let's write out those pivots, 1730. Okay, so this is a much better representation of that compressing period. So, when we re-enter the band down here, it implied trend up to this relative moving average. Beautiful. Which we rejected to from seven times. And now we actually have a slow trickle of an uptrend above it. However, our true rejection point, I still believe is going to be the weekly 50. Still gotta keep that in mind. And we really will not be able to exit this until this band, this huge, massive band, shed significant mass. So really, I'm probably gonna do a couple loop-de-loops over here and whatever it wants for a slow creak, if you like Wyckoff terminology, before retesting our previous support values, and then hopefully positive weighting of mean period volatility with significant compression of probability volatility to actually allow for us to form sustainable upside. Okay, trading view folks, that's all I have to say about this today. You have a beautiful one. Let's check out the comments. Hello, Bitcoin Go. Uh, weekly 200 moving average. FBTC, please. And I'll be honest, it looks like the FPS is lower than it is because of how laggy the chart is. If my face is laggy too, well then that's a different story. But let's go ahead and check out Ethereum. It's my understanding this has already crossed inside its mean inversion pivot. All right, 275 which does imply short entry. But right, I wanna see what it looks like in the CCI real quick. We'll try the 27 period. I mean, we're technically getting a short entry right now, but because I think Bitcoin still has some upside left, I'm not ready to trust it. Let's try the FBTC chart. I mean, there is implied downtrend here on the BTC chart. Although, yeah, I, I don't really want to bet against this, guys. I'll be honest. This, 
downward push here does not inspire confidence. The FUSD chart on the daily, however, I mean, we did have the positive wave PM cross and a retracement value, which does imply bullishness. So mixed signals. Yeah, the good news is if we really do miss out on the bottom and we do start to see significant upward acceleration, we'll know how to define retracement values to enter the trend, right? Like, look, let's look at this over here. This was the bottom. Then we had significant, ridiculous upside and we had retracement values, which we knew how to take. And then we had sustainable trend afterwards. So really, if we do miss the bottom, we still can just identify retracements. Like, think about this. What's the difference between, say, 3,000 or 373% upside and 247% upside? Yes, it's significant. But profit is profit. And preserving your upside, just any kind of upside, is more important than maximizing profit potential. Right? It's better to minimize your downside than maximize your upside. Hey, what else we got here? People say about FBTC. You know what? That is super laggy. One second. I actually have a pretty quick fix for this. Pa! Better? Barely? That's kind of weird. Okay. Well, we'll just keep going. Try out ADA BTC. Yeah, we actually have crossed the mean inversion pivot here, if I recall correctly. Let's check the four hour chart. Man, oh man, that downward acceleration is so nice. Um, we're gonna do the six hour chart. Kinda said I missed that, that's really good. 350. Yeah, okay. When we re-entered that pivot, implied we're going to this mean. We're tagging the 3.2 standard deviation at this time, which does imply some flagging or slight retracement. Let's set an alert so we can actually attempt entry here for a 30 period CCI, but Let's be honest, I'm going to load up a 30 period, or is it 30 or 35? 35? I'm just going to show you what a 35 period Bollinger Band looks like and why I think it's just so unlikely we're actually going to get an entry signal into this. Alright, because for us to actually receive a CCI roll down for trend re-entry, it would imply price would need to go outside of the mean reversion pivot before crossing back down in. And I don't see that significant of a bounce happening just because of how significantly this is accelerated. Um, really, I expect short-term exhaustion of selling pressure before trend continuation. Okay. Ask about more coins. Ah, Robert S says, we are below daily Ichimoku cloud on FBTC and below weekly Kijun, I think short. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird because you're getting really bullish signals on the FUSD chart, but the FBTC chart is poor at best. Like, I'm going to show you something cool here. Okay. You see this signal right here. We also got that signal on F or, um, on BLZ and VIB. I think BLZ returned 90% and VIB returned, yeah, that signal right there. And VIB returned 150%. VIB retracement though, that's nice. If I recall correctly, like this really old, this was my first call ever BLZ. We actually called it right here and we implied cup and handle and just used a retracement value for trend re-entry it was really profitable back then i used simpler ta just to 
be more convincing to the retail trader. But then I realized it's better to be right than appealing, so I chose to do something so incredibly complex that you need to buy my course to understand. And it's actually a pretty good business model. I freely give away extremely advanced and technical information because the only two ways to understand what I'm saying is watch every live stream and become incredibly committed to learning and understanding everything I say, or give me $400 to buy a six hour course so you can understand the vocabulary that way, right? Both options encourage either you giving me your shekels or B, heavy, heavy, heavy engagement. So it's um, really niche what I'm trying to do here. All right, cause I, I can, well, I guess I do make clickbait thumbnails, but I do them ironically. Like today is totally a bull flag. Like, yes, it is a bull flag, but I don't think it's going to result in, well, what a bull flag results in. Litecoin BTC. Yeah, great days. You're welcome to leave that short open. Just be ready to take profit on the, th well, not take profit, but set up a trailing take profit on the 350 MA. Last time I really looked at Litecoin, it wasn't an uptrend. Still an uptrend. Quad CCI implies re-entry. Maybe on the four hour? No, four hour is pretty choppy. And I have the wrong values set here. That's part of the problem. Um, I just want to try something to see if we can look at retracement values and trend continuation values. So we're going to look at the 260, 110, and 140, okay? Okay, so this one was the 260. Oh God, I don't remember which colors I said each band in. We're gonna do it like this. Yeah, this was the failed mean reversion. All right, because we had this over expansion, re-entry of band, and I tried shorting here, and I stopped out of that position hard. Like that, that one got me big time. But it looks like the other two mean versions have completed. Where this one is the 110. Where we re enter the band and then. You know, this mean reversion actually had an upward slope. That's so crappy. Right? Where the condition fulfills, but you actually lose money on being right. Like that's four and a half percent. And then this one worked out really well because this mean version was close to instantaneous on the 140 period. And then we're actually going to be able to define trend pivots here where, oh cat, I just had a crazy idea. Do you think it's possible to create a normalized look back period? where uh, I, I might be crazy, but like the longer the period, the longer the look back, or at least so that the look back period is relative to each wave PM period. I don't know if that's gonna make sense. Okay, point being, Someone's moving furniture upstairs. So, uh, we have this really nice and clean pivot here. Also, somebody tell me how many viewers are watching. I don't have my phone and I can't check. And having the mini chat open is far more convenient. That is a yes, but moment. Let's talk about it when we actually live stream together. 
and also thank you for letting me be so late today. Um, I perform much better on stream after I get a chance to like take a shower and put on a suit. So let's, yeah, okay, anyway. We have this really nice defined pivot down here on the 140. If we do tag that, we can imply upside. Very, very quick upside. And what I like about testing the bottom edge of a mean reversion containment zone is it's much more reliable uh, than entering the upside because of the slope of that band, right? Think about this. When you re-enter a band for a mean reversion from above after an uptrend, the slope of probability volatility for that mean reversion period is up, meaning you need to constantly adjust your stop loss above the top edge of the band. And if that's true, your profit ratio slowly degrades as the mean moves up and the slope of probability volatility of the top edge also moves up, right? And eventually you start off with like a four to five to one profit ratio, and then it slowly degrades into a one to one, like what we saw uh, in this mean reversion. And what's interesting about this mean reversion is, you know, we, we started with a huge profit ratio on the re-entry, and then our profit ratio ended up being like negative 0.5 to one. Like your win scenario ended up being a losing scenario just because of the aggressive slope of probability of volatility and the aggressive slope of the mean itself, which is why I generally advise against betting against long-term trends. Unless say you go to a lower resolution and you can more accurately just identify uh, mass based on daily candles, which is more situational, but you can get more consistent um, mean reversion pivots, let's say. And I have mixed feelings about lowering the resolution for that kind of purpose. Um, do you guys want to guess how many people are betting on a cup and handle right now? What do you think the retracement value is going to be on that front? <clears throat> mm. Excuse me, that was not flattering. Twenty, cool. Uh, get a few more altcoins out there, because right now I'm just rambling. Anyway, um, two hundred period. Yeah, I mean, technically on the daily trend is still defined. And I don't even have the band visible. Nice. Let's go back to defaults. Yeah, it's it's well defined. Um, oh, this might be cool. If we could actually look at the longest overexpanded period on the four hour chart and multiply it by, by six or divide it by six. Shit. Um, anyway, right where we have, I'm just gonna draw it in where we had this pivot down here, and then on the daily chart. Yeah, that's stunningly close to the mean reversion pivot on the daily. So let's actually set just a static price alert as a retracement value for Litecoin and see if we can grab an entry from it. OMG and XRP USD. Oh, okay. Um, staying short in a noisy range, I less recommend. If the mean version has completed, it, like I don't have the band link set up right now, but it implies that we're going to stay inside this huge range. And it's not exactly that range, but the point is it's still over 10%. And if you're on leverage, well, that's a lot of risk. Like you're, you're still in an uptrend as defined by the daily, so careful. Okay, OMG. Do you like my bow tie? If, if you look really closely, it has little Yorkies on it. It's perfect. So, OMG. Yeah, I'm already there. Uh, If 
Why you gotta make me look at this, man? Wave cam readings are really bad. Okay, we, we can do something on the 12 hour? Okay, that's the cleanest die we're gonna get. 200 period, nice. So we re-entered the 200 bend, we reverted exactly to the 200 mean, we bounced on the 200 mean. Uh, you know, using the mean itself as a retracement target is good, but implying direction after target is hit is bad. I cannot tell you if it will go up from here and laterally trade or down from here and laterally trade. And yeah, here's the thing, like, it's going to be more accurate than, say, a Fibonacci retracement value. But I don't like Fibonacci retracements because I can't imply direction from them. And I don't like using retracement values that aren't, say, trend pivots. Because now that we've retraced to this value, we won't continue trend. We're just going to trade laterally as defined by the band. And if that's the case, oh, well, sure. It might be 15% upside. Okay, yeah. Sure, and you can do a 5% downside. 5 to 1 profit ratio. Try it. Just know that it's going to have, like, maybe a 40% chance of hitting. And I would argue that, like, a Fibonacci retracement has maybe a 20% chance of hitting. And then at this point, you just do a high volume of trades because you hope your profit ratio is good. That is a lot of coins. XRP. Uh, okay. Yeah, we had this wave PM breakout and it was actually to the downside and it totally faked you out. I do not like trading USD pairs, I'm gonna be honest. Same wave PM crossed the downside here on... This one's on the upside. What am I supposed to do with this, guys? Like, this is so reactionary because of Bitcoin. If you look at the Bitcoin chart, it makes so much more sense. Watch. Ah. Cat, you didn't say that this was going to be where the downtrend ended on XRP, did you? We need to have a talk, young man. Just kidding. I'm, I'm pretty... Never mind. I'm not going there. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, I have no doubt a cat with charts is smarter than me. I just got lucky and happened to have a few more years of experience so he'll eventually outpace me don't worry guys cat's gonna be running this in a few years because like i've already hit my expert plateau if you will and then a cat is still down here rocketing upwards coming out with new indicators every day it's like i have my little system and it works great and then if you ever if you ever looked at a cat with charts well charts I mean, goddamn. Like, we need to have a live stream like this week, Kat, so you can explain to me in depth what in God's name you're doing with this range indicator, because it works really well, and I want to understand it, but it's a little intimidating. I'm not going to lie. Then again, 3D Wave PM was intimidating, but I put the time into that, so... All is well with the universe. It's that was meant to be a compliment, cat. Just just take it. As long as it's holding 30 cents, I would call it long-term accumulation by someone. Sure, we're close to a market bottom. I have no doubt that we can do it. But I'm not a buy and holder, I'm a swing trader. And since the Bitcoin chart, oh my god. Just, it's so hard to look at, just... There is not a universe where I would want to buy this, okay? 
Okay, I'm going to point out the problem with trying to do XRP right now. We're going to compare XRP BTC just to BTC. And guess what's going to happen? BTC is going to outperform XRP BTC. Okay, watch this. And let's, let's do three charts all next to each other. And I'm using Heiken Ashi to smooth everything because it's convenient. Like, sure, it looks like accumulation, but you are being outperformed by literally just being a Bitcoin maximalist. Okay. So, if you have an uptrend on Bitcoin, and XRP decides it needs to go sideways, just needs to maintain its USD value, why not just hold Bitcoin instead of XRP? Right? It, it, they just cancel each other out. This is a significant downtrend. This is a significant uptrend. And it results in nothing. And while we can call that accumulation, there are so many better options and you would outperform holding XRP by just holding Bitcoin. And that's why I'm salty about the chart. All right, because you have such an aggressive downtrend because Bitcoin has such an aggressive uptrend. And if we actually do cross the mean reversion pivots on the XRP daily here and get an upward pop, well, I'm assuming that's going to be because Bitcoin does that, right? So this could laterally hold its price. So if you longed XRP on leverage when Bitcoin starts to dump, if you're right about the USD pair being accumulated, then... It's okay. Uh, th this gets me. If you have consistent and heavy selling volume, just because Bitcoin happens to be going up, I wouldn't call its USD pair accumulation inherently. Right? It makes sense that it's getting accumulated because of we're close to the market bottom. But if you're seeing consistent heavy selling, I wouldn't consider it accumulation. That's this is people selling their bags in mass, and you could say they're selling their bags in mass to maintain its USD value. But oh man, there's too much negative volume. It's not cozy. Oh God, look at all these comments. Yeah, we probably should have shorted this. I mean, I I did that with TRX. I just TR, Let's load this one up as TRX. Watch this. God damn it. I'm so sad this future's expired. Actually, I have mixed feelings about it. So let me point out. Let's switch this to two charts. Like, because I was in a long-term short position, like the longest futures available to me. And the futures expired. And if I was still in, well, I would have doubled my profit. So what's nice is trading you lines up uh, where the chart is. And I actually called this, so you guys were in this too. So right here, right there on TRX, Right, we call that short for a long-term leverage position, long-term short. And sure, we could go hunting for the trading view idea, but... Like, what outperformed here? XRP losing 23% or TRX losing... 20%? Like, the downtrends are super similar. And to say that we missed out on XRP but called... TRX at essentially the same time as the downtrend started accelerating and 
Like, maybe I should start doing en masse short calls for altcoins. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Right, where we have this downward acceleration on every major altcoin, except Ethereum right now. Uh, the thing is, my futures expired here, so I actually only ended up with, say, closer to 12%, 14. Which is good, because this wick directly after would have taken me out of the position, so <laughs> it's uh, kind of a blessing. Trailing stops, man. I, I had the trailing stop active, and I just did not want to walk log into my account the next day after I seen that wick. Like, it, it totally stopped out right where my entry was. And then I log into the account and the futures expired the day before. <laughs> it was so lucky. I need to pay more attention to my expiration dates. Like, I swear to God. I'm just so used to doing the perpetual swap that... <sighs> Goodness gracious. Probably XRP well sold XRP to BTC on top of XRP BTC chart. When BTC reaches USD peak, they will scoop out selling their BTC and make money both ways. Yeah, there's definitely someone doing that. I'm gonna wear a bow tie every day, a different bow tie every day. And it's gonna be great. Okay, we need to look at B and B. I'm gonna be done, I think. Left my phone charger in the car. Oh, trend continuation, Jesus. Although I would consider this a short op. I wonder what that retracement value is. 275. Okay, well, it's set to 200, so I know it didn't hit. There's really no way we could have caught that except Quad CCI right there. Quad CCI does work on the daily, just I was more convinced this was distribution. The higher high is concerning, but the aggressive downward slope with the 50 and the fact that we're tagging is quite probably a very clear rejection point. If I could short BNB, I would right now. This extreme value is probably not going to fare well, I'm going to be honest. Well, I'll be honest, last time we tagged it was here, and that just resulted in lateral move. But the difference is, is the slope of probability volatility of the 3.2 is stagging. Right here, we still had aggressive expansion Whereas here we have aggressive compression. And if you're getting aggressive compression, it implies lateral trading because it's hard to re-expand compressing periods. Especially by tagging their most extreme values. Great days, work break is finished. Smash that like, he comments. He knows what he's talking about, guys. I would recommend um, aggressively hitting the like button. Bitmax IO, I can short BNB. Well, there's good FA on BNB. This is copy pasta, but BNB is like the only altcoin with a legitimate use case. Whoo, but if we can call the top on this bad boy, I would look forward to that. I want I want to short it. I want to short it so bad. 50% drawdown. I would so be into it. Because we're finally seeing that like major first wave of profit taking. I want to see how big these red candles are. 
Pretty small, actually. It's declining negative volume. It's weird. Try the four hour. Is there any volume divergence here? It's minimal. Yeah, consistently decreasing di volume divergence. Or consistently decreasing volume resulting in divergence, excuse me. The divergence is increasing. That's all I gotta say. That's what I think. Bat is doing a thing. Quad CSCI would not have helped us here. Would this retracement value? I wanna find out. 140. Whew, I always get excited looking at these. Nah. Uh, well, that's really clean though, hold on. Lateral trading is defined by the longest overexpanded period as long as the longest overexpanded period has a mass reading above the 0.7 value. You know what that means? Ha, ah, so clean. So you see this period right here? As long as it's orange, this can't break out. So it gets rejected. But when it turns green a few candles later, it supports the breakout. So I flags form, folks. Okay. That's it. I'm done. Goodbye.